I think it's safe to say everybody loves a good Wild West story. The good, the bad, and the ugly, Young Guns, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, anything with John Wayne, the Wild West has always been a staple of the entertainment industry. In the modern day, we've been lucky enough for the Wild West to go beyond just books or movies thanks to video games. Video games have a way of immersing the player inside their world unlike any other medium. It does this by allowing you to take control of the character in-game and make all the decisions as if it were you. Now, not every game allows you to change the outcome of a story, but it does let you actively partake in it as if you were really there. There are so many great examples of this in video games. Bioshock, The Witcher, Last of Us, Red Dead Redemption, just to name a few. In these games, you feel a part of their world and every decision you make feels like it has consequences even if it sometimes doesn't. The Red Dead Redemption series contains some of the most thrilling, heartbreaking, and well-told western tales the world has ever seen. But one of my personal favorite Wild West tales you might not have heard of. It's the story of Silas Greaves. Between Billy the Kid, Jesse James, and the Wild Bunch, Silas has quite a list of good stories. If any of them are true, that is. They'll find out soon enough. Time to settle up. Silas Greaves was an old legendary bounty hunter who one day in 1910 found himself in Abilene, Kansas. As is routine for Silas, he heads toward the saloon, and this is where our story begins. Don't I know you, sir? Don't believe so. I haven't been here in many years. Name's Silas Greaves. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? Used to be. The story starts off with a few introductions and a bit of skepticism towards Silas Greaves. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true? Jack, be nice. A few. Dwight is excited to have a real gunslinging legend just across the table, and Silas doesn't waste any time jumping straight into the storytelling. First man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? Damn right. That scrawny son of a bitch had no fear. The game is divided into chapters, each being a different chapter of Silas Greaves' bounty hunting days. In the first mission, we're already introduced to the excellent way they've handled the storytelling for this game, which has us actively playing out Silas's memories for the group in the saloon. I knew that going through that front door meant putting my butt in a shooting gallery, so I decided to get sneaky. This style of storytelling allows for some great comedic moments and input from the group to question the accuracy of all his stories. Yep, the Apaches always appeared out of nowhere, and there never seemed to be an end to it. Hold on, were you attacked by Apaches? W what happened to the Cowboys? Did I say they were Apaches? I said Clanton's Cowboys attacked me Apache style. I was in a pitched battle, but I was holding my own against it. Sometimes Silas even likes to play around with the story by telling it one way, and the game lets us play it out. One wrong bullet could have turned that mine into a dad blasted too. I freely admit that my plan of attack is not just moronic, but clearly insane. It's a good thing that I abandoned that ridiculous plan before I even tried it. Instead, I spotted a ladder, a way into the mine from the opposite side. Throughout the game, some of the storytelling gets even more wild, leaving everyone to become more and more skeptical of Silas's stories. Excuse me, Ben. Where would I find the gentleman's facilities? Suddenly I have an urgent need to drain my one-eyed snake. Liquor. 
While Silas takes care of his snake, the others question the truth of what he's been saying. I don't know, Jack. I think I believe him. You don't think he met Jesse James? Boy, you gotta be kidding me. That story makes no sense at all. Jack. I mean, you gotta be two bricks short of a load to believe that cock and bull story. I don't agree. Jack, lay off the ball. But boss. you seriously think that tired old man went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jesse James? <laughs> well, that's better. Come back. Did I mention that this Jim was married to the infamous Bell Star? Of course, I didn't learn that until later. Anyway. This style of storytelling is what gives this game so much charm and it keeps it entertaining from start to finish. The game is only about four hours long, but it never drags and never gets boring thanks to the amusing way it conveys the story. But I don't want to spoil too many of the great one-liners and the banter between Silas and the group, because I think it's something you should experience for yourselves. The gameplay really captures the feeling of that over-the-top gunslinging legend you hear about in all the Wild West outlaw stories. From dual-wielding six-shooters, dropping guys fast as lightning with your reliable lever-action rifle, or even blasting enemies up close and personal with shotguns. Looks like a double-barreled hell whistle. It could blow a man clear off the street. You hardly had to aim the damn thing. There's always a way to feel like a complete badass outlaw. Throughout the game, you level up and earn skill points to apply to three different playstyles. Gunslinger, which mostly benefits your revolver playstyle. Ranger, which suits more of a ranged approach. Or Trapper, which focuses on close range weapons like the shotgun or explosives like dynamite. From giving you extra damage for combo kills, slowing down time while aiming down sights, or detonating your dynamite in midair, each skill tree offers great bonuses for every playstyle and visibly shows your character getting stronger with each successive skill acquired. Like I mentioned, the gameplay is really over the top and doesn't shy away from being overtly ludicrous, and it's a good thing. There's cinematic moments in the gameplay that have you dodging bullets, performing some insanely daring multi-kills, and evading environmental hazards. These cinematic moments match the storytelling almost perfectly, and again, really nail that Wild West magic. If you're not slaying waves of bandits or gang members, then you're facing off against their leaders. Some of the most notorious names in Outlaw Legends. Johnny Ringo, Butch Cassidy, John Wesley Harding, You fight some of these legends in gunfights with their gang members, but sometimes it comes down to a fight between just the two of you. And repay him I did. The dual system, while a bit clunky, is great and can be pretty challenging at times. The game scores you based on your reaction time, focus, speed, headshot bonus, and if you kill the man honorably. To kill a man honorably means that you didn't draw first, proving not only that you have the better skill, but you're also the better man. And that you killed him in a fair fight. Throughout the game, you can also find and collect things called Nuggets of Truth. These collectibles reveal various facts of the American Old West and usually pertain to the mission and the location they're found in. These collectibles really add to the overall story and the world building of the game and are an example of collectibles done right. While the game's narrative progresses, the tone shifts a bit from Silas being funny and relaxed when reminiscing of his gunslinging days, and it starts to get a little bit deeper once he has a few drinks in him. His real thoughts start to shine through when questioning his past and if he's become like the men he had once hated. Did my thirst for vengeance turn me into something worse than the man I was after? By this point in my storied career, I had killed more men than Bob Bryant ever had. And by the end, all will be revealed, leaving us with one final decision to make. I won't spoil the ending here because, again, it's worth experiencing for yourself. After you finish the game's excellent campaign, there are more things to keep you playing. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? New Game Plus is available, allowing you to take your newly acquired skills and weaponry throughout the game again on a harder difficulty.
Arcade mode has a bunch of chaotic missions that score you based on how many enemies you can kill and how fast you can do so. Combos in here are key to a high score and the leaderboards exist to see what you're up against. Duels is a place to replay all the duels from the game's campaign in one sitting with a limited number of lives. Duels also have a leaderboard ranking and they're a great way to practice and perfect your sleight of hand as a gunslinger. Call of War as Gunslinger is one of the best Wild West experiences out there and it deserves to be played by anybody that's a fan of the Wild West. The purpose of this video was to highlight what makes it worth playing without revealing too much and I hope more people go on to enjoy this hidden gem. It released in 2013 for only $15 which was more than a fair enough asking price. I was lucky enough to get this on sale for under $4 on a summer sale a year after it released on my Xbox 360 and it felt like I'd robbed the devs for paying $4 for such a high quality game. I'd easily pay $30 or maybe even $40 for something this high quality and replayable. Sure the campaign is only 4 hours but it was entertaining from start to finish. And there's so many things to do after the campaign. I made sure to rebuy the game on Steam for $15 and I haven't regretted my repurchase. Call of War as Gunslinger will go down as one of the most underrated video games in history and one of the best Wild West stories ever told. Thanks for watching the video guys, I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy then maybe leave a like on the video and let me know in the comments section on your favorite western video game. I know Red Dead Redemption is probably my personal favorite, Call of War as Gunslinger is easily up there as my second favorite. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in my next video.